Energy today is uncertain. It's not risky, but it is uncertain. And uncertainty is defined mostly by questions rather than answers. Are we talking about low or lower carbon future? Are we talking about technology that will replace energy companies or technology that is going to allow energy companies to do something different than what they are doing today? We have an economic crisis, now we have real-time climate change. We need a new economic vision for the world and it better be compelling. It has to move as quickly in the developing countries as the industrial nations. And we have to be off a carbon-based civilization, off, in less than 30, 35 years, if we have any chance of avoiding the abyss. But at the same time, we have to think, or we have to cater for the fact that we need four and a half billion people to get access to clean energy by 2050. 2.4 billion new people, plus the more than 2 billion that don't have it at today. In order to continue and describe the world in an environment that is going to allow us to put some kind of framework around this free, free-loaded conversation, we've defined three scenarios. The first scenario, which we called hydrocarbon heavy, is basically the way the world is today. The scenario number two is called the electric evolution. This reflects a faster progression from scenario number one towards a low carbon energy. The third scenario is called renewable revolution. We are no longer going to be in the business of energy. We are going to be in the business of providing services that require energy. I guess the, the key point here is that and for customers, they will have to make some decision in the next 5, 10, 15 years as to what they do and how they want to lead their lives. Energy companies, be it power utilities, be it oil and gas organization, or anywhere in the value chain, are going to have to make some key decision as to how they evolve their business model. What kind of services do they sell to their customers? To me, it's pretty clear that we're in an accelerated uh, and accelerating world. There are also retardants. The retardant uh, column is pretty powerful. Capital intensity, uh, incumbent uh, power and grip over, over political um, systems, some really difficult problems. So like what was talked about previously, you have this confluence of stakeholders from the consumer, the network, and the ancillary market that are now all interconnected. And this technology is real, it's, it's live. Oil and gas companies need to evolve by really finally embracing what digital means. But not just the gadgets and the widgets and the tools, but really bringing it into the company, into their organization, and figuring out how it's going to impact their workforce. So we're going to have to become more like the tech industry in a way, in the way we attract talent, recruit talent, the kind of talent we bring in. And that's going to be true for us, and it's going to be true for our, for our customers. And that will have implications in terms of the way we work together. So there has been a lot of discussion this morning, specifically on the various scenarios, and some disagreements, say uh, one, scenario two, scenario three. Are we on scenario one in a slow way that's going to last until scenario three? Or are we already in scenario three? but with a very long sunset that will take a while to get there. Uh, so that, that was for me, the, the most revealing part was the, the diversion is more around the pace and the speed than the destination. There seems to be some commonality of view and destination, but the pace might be different.